Gudan Dag, it is I, your Norse uncle, Eric, reluctant bard of lost Skadinavio, Harrispex of the Worm Road, old Norse philologist and tempter of fate, self banished from my ancestral homeland, dwelling now on the shores of Vinland, returning every once in a blue moon to tend my business and gawk at the monuments of the old country this time venturing to take a closer look at some of the stone circles of Rogaland and beyond, with lots of headspace for digression as always. Okay, so right now I'm at Domsteinane in Sula municipality in uh, Rugalan, of course. So Domstenana is this sort of uh, stone circle with uh, eight spokes radiating from a single center consisting of an altar-like or table-like construction with two big white stones flanking it. Let's start with the obvious question. What the hell kind of site is this anyway? Is it a dog? Or is it some kind of thing? Come there, back in, you <laughs> Unfortunately, we can only speculate. The planet it was raised on is called Domsheu. Norwegian Dom is cognate with English Doom, Old Norse Doomr, a legal term meaning judgment, verdict, or court. Heu meaning the heath, indicating that Domsheu was a site where things were happening. Alternately, there were never any courts here, but the locals named it so because of a preconceived notion that courts were held outdoors at stone circles in antiquity. And so, the site fit their mental image of an assembly site, and the name was born. Either way, the name Domsteinane, or the Doomstones, indicates at the very least that the locals imagined that this was where the courts were carried out. Even though academic consensus does not point in that direction, we can't necessarily disprove it. Others have postulated that it could have been a cult site, an outdoor shrine or a sanctuary where animals were sacrificed. But back then, of course, the distinction between cult and court was probably fuzzy anyway, as religious festivals, courts, and seasonal markets were coordinated. But the fact remains, elsewhere in Scandinavia and continental Germania, stone circles of this kind are usually graves, most often cremation burials with relatively sparse inventory. Such carns of every shape and size is common in the vicinity, as I touched upon in a previous video. Either way, coming to Domsdenane you'll be immediately struck by the fact that it appears to be an extremely well-preserved ancient site. And it is and it isn't, uh, because first we have descriptions from the 1700s of the site and also some illustrations, but uh, the site was later buried uh, by, by sand drifting in from the beach. Uh, somewhere behind me here. Uh, these stones were also removed and brought to the nearby farms to serve different uh, uh, utilitarian purposes in the 1800s. What happened is that uh, in the last uh, 12, maybe 12 years ago or so, there they did a reconstruction of the entire site and uh, the whole thing has been excavated. And this is probably exactly what it looked like originally. Uh, miraculously, the stones apparently are supposed to be the same original stones that were here uh, back in the day. And one more thing, how old is it? We don't really know. Uh, Iron Age, some point, presumably. If we walk over here, you can see that somebody has been using uh, the altar-like construction here to, uh, to to burn candles on it. And I'm not very surprised. I'm sure that there's uh, many different um, uh, kind of new religious groups and, uh, and esoteric communities that would be attracted to such a place. And there is uh, there is a neo-pagan kind of Asa true scene here in Stavanger, which is not very far away. There were some recent controversies surrounding uh, voodoo rituals performed at an ancient site in Vestfold in East Norway and it caused quite a stir in the media. I don't really mind that sort of cultic performance at all. Just be respectful uh, of the fact that these are fragile ancient sites. So whatever you do here should be non-invasive and not 
damage or alter these sites should be a no-brainer uh, you would think but unfortunately some people thought it was a great idea to tag the runic alphabet on these stones and that's not a great idea that's a dumbass fucking idea so i don't know who or why they did this but that's not cool i don't know uh, there's a part of me that also sees stuff like this and uh there's a weird kind of continuity there you know phenomenologically interesting just consider the Korkstar stone from Strien, which has been tampered with at least five times. First, when the ships were carved into it, maybe 300 BC, then those runes were carved over them, presumably between the 2nd and 4th centuries AD, and then this swastika was carved over those, probably somewhere between the 3rd and 6th centuries, it's very hard to say. Then the rock was blown out of the mountain in 1898, later discovered and moved to Bergen Museum, only to be sprayed down by juvenile delinquents. By the way south, by Egersund, you got this site, Stopple Steinane, 21 meters across and 16 stones of archaeological bliss, with excavations revealing a coal pit in the center, indicating that this is indeed a burial monument and not necessarily a legal assembly, as local folklore holds. Speaking of assemblies, we do actually have candidates for assembly complexes in the area that are a lot better suited. Picturesque little spot, not too vandalized. Bring this to throw in the trash. Short walk from the main road. As with that fucking uh, runic graffiti. I mean, if the site interests you enough that you bother visiting it at all, why do you do shit like this, right? 